Hi, my name is Jan Nassim, and this is a talk for Asia Group 2021 uh, presentation titled Snarky Ceremonies. This is a joint work by Marco Kovais, Mary Mahler, and Mikhail Volkov. Let me start you by reminding what are CK Snacks. This, this stands for Zero Knowledge, Succinct, Non-Interactive Argument of Knowledge. And the idea is that we want to prove that some statement X, which is public, and some witness W, which is private, satisfy a certain relation. And from security-wise, we wanted to satisfy knowledge soundness. This means that prover who is able to convince the verifier should know a witness W, and we want zero knowledge, which essentially means that the only information we leak is that X and W are in the relation, and we don't even reveal the witness here. And finally, we want succinctness, which essentially means that the proof size is independent of the size of the statement and the size of the witness. Smallest snark so far, or at least one of the smallest, is uh, proposed by Krott six, uh, Jens Krott in 2016, and it requires a complicated trusted setup, unfortunately, which has uh, made it very difficult to use it in practice. So what I mean by this trusted setup? Um, essentially, we have here a prover, a verifier, and some trusted central party. Prover knows statement and the witness, and verifier knows only the statement. And then in the beginning of the protocol, the trusted party will generate what we call a common reference string. So this is a, a bit string for, from some very specific distribution. And he gives this to both the prover and the verifier. And then prover can use this to construct an argument and verifier can use this to either accept the argument, which means he believes it or he will reject it. There are essentially two flavors of the common reference string. There are uniformly random strings, which is completely uniformly random bit string, or there are structured reference string, which is anything besides the uniformly random string. And uniformly random string, we sometimes call a transparent setup because it's, uh, it's a relatively easy to obtain a uniformly random string from some natural resources, which means that um, we essentially don't have to trust it anymore. We can obtain it by, I don't know, picking, for example, uh, certain digits of pi or, or some other natural source of randomness. Unfortunately, protocols based on URS are less efficient. And then you have uh, protocols with structured reference string. Here, the setup is much more complicated and we don't have as good ways of generating this structured reference string, but the protocols are much more efficient. So in case of structured reference string, the trusted party usually does something like this. He first generates a trapdoor, then he applies some function to the trapdoor, and this then generates the SRS. Unfortunately, anyone who knows the trapdoor can completely break the protocol. It is actually by design of the protocol that this is possible. Essentially, this trapdoor is used to prove that the zero knowledge property holds, but it accidentally also can break the soundness property if someone actually knows this. Uh, which essentially means that in most applications, a single party should not be able to generate the SRS. Because otherwise, I mean, we really have a centralized trust in the system 
which for example in the blockchain setting is not really acceptable at all. There have been several proposals how to solve this. Uh, one of the earlier proposals was to use multi-party computation. So here the idea is very simple. We already have a bunch of multi-party computation protocols. Uh, the trapdoor can be shared between different parties. So each party will generate, generate its local trapdoor. Then they run some multi-party computation protocol. And the final output is an SRS, uh, where uh, F is applied to a master trapdoor, where the master trapdoor is some sort of a combination of the individual trapdoors of each party. And uh, typically, you get a property that if some fraction of the parties is honest, then the final trapdoor does not leak, and the SRS has a correct structure. Unfortunately, it's also quite inconvenient if you want to run this with a large number of parties because they have to be available throughout this whole protocol, which might take quite a while. And also multi-party computation protocols are not that efficient if you want to run it with huge number of parties, which you would perhaps in a blockchain setting. So in response to that, yes, there have been proposed some specialized multi-party computation protocols, which are a bit more efficient, but they are still quite cumbersome to use in practice. Uh, another possibility, which is a little bit better, is known as updatability. So these are essentially specialized snarks where the multi-party computation protocol has only one round. Uh, what do I mean by this? Um, now we basically have that each party generates a pixel trapdoor, and uh, the first party will produce some SRS and some proof of update for one. The second party will just update this proof and uh, generate its own update proof. So this update proof is something just to verify that the update was done correctly, and so on. Um, and this, in these protocols, we only rely on one honest party. And uh, in order to verify the final SRS, you just need the very last SRS and some all of those intermediate update proofs, which are typically short in those protocols. And, and there are now many works in this model, like Sonic and Marlin and Plunk. But in general, they are a little bit less efficient than the non updatable snarks. Uh, so it would still be interesting to kind of uh, make those non updatable snarks also updatable in some way. Um, and finally, there, there's a solution by Bowie, Gabison, and Myers, which is a player exchangeable NPC. Um, so basically, the idea is that in these types of protocols, the trapdoor doesn't have to be committed uh, in the beginning of the protocol. And instead, they use a random beacon, which is like an extra party in the protocol. And then in each round of the protocol, also this random beacon participates. And we can kind of, we are just assuming that this random beacon uh, behaves correctly. It produces some random numbers for us. And uh, yeah, so the output of the protocol is kind of the same as in the uh, usual MPC protocols. But what is nice here is that the parties can be different in different rounds of the protocol. So now we are not anymore relying on the uh, fact that the same party is available in the first phase and the second phase of the protocol. So this is a lot more convenient if you have a lot of parties in a multi-party computation protocol, especially in the blockchain setting. 
And now this uh, protocol of Bowie, Gabison, and Myers, this was used quite extensively, for example, with the Zcash protocol, Aztec protocol, Filecoin, Semaphore, Loopring, and so on, uh, with, with quite some success. So let's look a bit more closely what is this random beacon here. Idea of the random beacon is that uh, after certain time intervals, it will produce us a new random number. Um, and why it's useful in this previous protocol is that we can basically use this uh, previously unknown random number to randomize uh, this current state of the SRS. Unfortunately, it's quite co uh, complicated to construct secure random beacons. Uh, there's a heuristic approach which uh, has been used in this blockchain world, which is that you just take a hash of a relatively recent blockchain block, and you now say that, OK, this is my new random output of the beacon. So this is only a heuristic approach. If you ask, actually want to do it securely, then it's a very challenging problem. So ideally, we would not want to use a random beacon at all. So what is our contribution here? Firstly, we propose a security framework for non-interactive arguments, which uh, have a ceremony protocol. So this is a protocol for setting up the SRS. And you can kind of see this as a generalization of the notion of updatability, if you're familiar with this one. Uh, then we propose a simplified version of CROT16 ceremony, uh, as a, essentially a simplified version of this Bowie, Gabison, Myers protocol, which does not use a random beacon. So we completely eliminate this assumption. And finally, we give a proof of security in a mixed model of algebraic group model and random oracle model. It's technically quite an advanced uh, security proof, which we will very briefly go over as well. So let's take a look of that security framework of our uh, proposal. So it's not with the ceremony. Firstly, we have a Brewer algorithm and a verifier algorithm, as usual. But the SRS is now split into independently updatable parts, SRSU, which we call a datable SRS, and the uh, SRSS, which is a specialized SRS. So the idea here is that SRSU is independent of the concrete relation that we are trying to prove. And the SRSS already depends on the relation. Then we have an update algorithm, which is used to update the SRS. It takes in the previous SRS, a set of update proofs, and an index, either U or S, depending on which part of the SRS we want to update. And then it produces a new version of the SRS and an update proof for that SRS. Then we have an SRS verification algorithm, which takes as an input an SRS and the set of update proofs and either accepts it or rejects it. Um, yeah, so what does the model actually look like? Uh, basically, we do updating in two phases. So first, we update the universal SRS. This is the SRS without a specific relation. And it goes as in usual updatability model. So the first guy updates and produces a proof and so on. Then we finish the universal updating phase and fix the SRS, the universal SRS. And now, we have, let's say, some relation that we want to use. 
and we take the SRS, which is uh, universal, and we generate uh, initial specialized SRS. So this is an SRS which depends on the relation, and we start updating this. And as you see here, uh, these parties in the first phase and second phase, they don't have to be the same. So from updatability perspective, we sort of argue that there's actually not much difference if you work in this type of updatability model, where you fix the universal SRS at some point and then go on with the specialized SRS, or uh, you just have your usual notion of updatability. And the final SRS is just a conjunction of the final updatable SRS and the final specialized SRS. And from the secure device, we want completeness in two flavors, actually. We want update completeness which essentially says that, okay, so if you have some SRS, which verifies and we make an update, then also this updated SRS will verify. And we also have prover completeness, which is essentially the usual notion of completeness in an interactive zero knowledge protocols that, uh, okay, so if the SRS verifies, and an honest prover generates a proof, then also the verifier will accept the proof. But these are just some properties to guarantee that our protocol even makes sense. Uh, then we require update knowledge soundness. What this one says is that for every efficient adversary A, there exists an efficient extractor such that if the adversary outputs a statement X and some proof Y and it verifies, uh, then the extractor is able to extract the witness from the view of A. So this is all the internal knowledge that the adversary A has. Uh, and yeah, so you can extract the witness and the SRS here, is generated by interacting with the challenger. So um, essentially what we allow is that in the first phase of updating, adversary can request the challenger to update his uh, SRS. And by the end of the uh, universal phase, adversary will submit some SRS new together with some update proofs such that at least one of those update proofs was generated by the challenger. So essentially there has to be one honest update. And the second phase works basically the same way. So now we have some SRSU already fixed. Adversary can uh, request updates for specialized SRS. And by the end of the phase, he submits some SRS S, a specialist SRS, uh, and update proofs such that at least one of the updates was done honestly by the challenger. Uh, and then we borrow the notion of subversion zero knowledge, uh, which was invented by Bellara, Hooks, Power, and Scapuro. Uh, and the idea there is that adversary is allowed to pick any SRS and a set of update proofs such that uh, they verify. And in that case, there must exist an ex efficient extractor that can extract a trapdoor from the SRS. And this trapdoor can be used to simulate uh, uh, proofs that are indistinguishable from honest proofs. So yeah, this is our security model. Uh, okay, so now let's go and check what this uh, ceremony protocol of CROT16 roughly looks like. So uh, CROT16 
As I mentioned before, it's not with one of the shortest proofs so far. And we can split the SRS into a universalized, universal part and the specialized part. Uh, here, this G is generator of one of the uh, pairing groups, and H is the generator of the other pairing group. And X is some integer, uh, which is a trapdoor. So X, alpha, and beta here are actually a trapdoor. And the specialist SRS kind of looks something similar. But what you can notice here is that the universal SRS has essentially monomials in the exponent, whereas the specialized SRS uh does not necessarily have monomials so here we see some much more complicated polynomials but essentially what we uh, way we update this is that in the first srs let's say if you want to update this element an updater would pick some x prime exponentiate um let's say this element with x prime to the power of i and then the updated element will look like such. So this x prime x is now the new trapdoor x. And if you want to update the second phase, then already the x, alpha, and beta are fixed, and we're only updating delta. So update will pick some delta prime and uh, again exponentiate let's say this element, for example, by one over delta prime, which means that now this delta here is updated. Um, and beyond that, we also need to include the update proof, which essentially allows us to verify that the updating was done correctly. So what this proof contains is, in case of x, for example, trapdoor x, it will have g to the power of x times x prime, g to the power of x prime, and h to the x prime. So x prime is this new trapdoor here, and x is the previous trapdoor. And then we also have a proof of knowledge for x prime. This is something which we need for a security proof. Uh, and the verification looks something like this. So. E here is a bearing operator, and we can kind of verify this that this g x uh, x prime was computed correctly by running this function, for example. And then we also verify uh, the proof of knowledge. So this proof of knowledge is actually some very specialized protocol. I won't go very much into details here. Um, but so far, the protocol that I've introduced is essentially the same as the Bowie, Capison, Myers protocol. But here we somehow already are deviating a bit. We are requiring stronger security properties for the proof of knowledge uh, part. Uh, what we essentially prove in the paper is that this proof of knowledge has to satisfy zero knowledge. And the very specific flavor of soundness, which will have straight line simulation extractability. So, this is a very kind of strong notion of soundness. And in addition, the soundness adversary is allowed to uh, ask from the challenger a group element uh, that we can see here, where x1 to xn is some secret value and f with some polynomial chosen by the adversary. And additionally, additionally we can we allow the adversary to query the random oracle. And we prove this in the model which combines random oracle model and the algebra group model. Algebra group model I will introduce now. Uh, so yeah, let's look briefly what is the, our uh, security model and the security proof. I will give some very brief overview of our main security proof. But before that, what is this algebraic proof model? 
Uh, so here we have an adversary and the challenger. And in ad algebraic group model, the challenger can give us some group elements. And whenever adversary outputs a group element A, then he also has to output integers, which are a linear rep a representation of those group elements. What I mean by this uh, is that A has to satisfy this type of relation uh, between the elements that he has received so far. Uh, and now the challenger can send us some new set of elements. And again, when adversary outputs some group element B, then he has to also provide integers D1 to Dm, which again satisfy this type of linear relation. But notice here that now uh, B can depend both the elements that were sent in the first round and also the ones that were sent in the second round. But this is what we assume from the adversary. So essentially, this is a restricted model of computation where adversary is forced to output something that he would usually not force. But this is, has become very uh, widely used in the bearing based setting. And additionally, we assume a random oracle where adversary can input some bit string x. And in return, you will get a group element y, which is a random group element. And our security of our main result uh, depends on q1, q2, discrete logarithm assumption, uh, where basically adversary will pick a random exponent z and send these group elements that you see in the screen. Uh, and now the adversary is supposed to find an integer z, which is the exponent. So it's the usual discrete logarithm assumption, but uh, adversary gets more knowledge than usual. And the statement of our main theorem is that if 2n minus 1, 2n minus 2 discrete logarithm assumption holds, and we work in this combined model of algebraic group model and random oracle model, then we achieve update knowledge soundness for the ceremonial CROT16 snack. So this is CROT16 snack together with this uh, updating protocol. And notice that here we don't require a random beacon, which is one of the main results or main achievements of this paper. Uh, oh yes, and the N here stands for the number of multiplication gates in the circuit of the relation. So I will very briefly go over of a high level strategy of our main security proof, and this will end this talk. So essentially the idea is that, okay, we fix some algebraic adversary A, and then we will construct an extractor, and this extractor will uh, uh, output specific uh, coefficients, like this algebraic representation coefficients that I showed before, uh, which we claim that will uh, now correspond to the witness. And our rest of the proof will actually we will be arguing that this output of the extractor is indeed the witness. Uh, we use here several games. Game zero is the original update knowledge soundness game with adversary A and the extractor that I just described. And so if u phi is the set of update proofs in some phase phi, then we call the critical query to be the last honest update, that is the update done by the challenger. And in game one, what we will try to do is try, uh, we will guess the index for the critical query 
before the beginning of the protocol. Um, we don't know this by I guess. And uh, basically, if we guess it correctly, then the challenger will, on the I, I guess, query, it will not update the SRS proposed by the adversary, but he will instead generate a completely fresh SRS, which is unbiased. And he will instead simulate the update proof. So now what this will guarantee for us is that the SRS from this point on has not been, up to this point, has not been biased at all by the adversary because we generated it freshly. Um, and we will use the zero knowledge and straight line simulation extractability properties of this proof of knowledge sub protocol to show that these two games are indistinguishable. And then the algebraic group model part of the proof will look something like this. We define a polynomial Q in the trapdoor variables x, x alpha, x beta, and x delta, where if you apply basically the trapdoors at the point at the index guess, uh, that they will be zero exactly when V accepts. So this Q is essentially some very complicated polynomial, which depends on the verification equation, all the intermediate SRS states and random oracle responses to the adversary and also the AGM coefficients of the adversary. But it will have this property that it is zero exactly when uh, V accepts the proof. And now the proof will branch into two parts. In the first part, we say, okay, suppose that this polynomial Q is not zero, then we show that we can do a reduction to this variation of the discrete logarithm assumption. And if it is zero, then we show uh, by arguing the structure of this polynomial, that whatever the extractor outputs is actually the witness. So this is a very technical part of the proof, but it indeed seems to work out. So, so much about this proof. And this is, this was the, by far the hardest part of this paper. I think it took us a couple of months to get this proof correct. Um, but yeah, so the main takeaway of this paper uh, even non updatable snarks can be updated if we allow it multiple phases. And this seems to have very little different difference in practice if you have uh, only one phase updating or two phase updating. However, what is actually important is that those one phase updatable snarks are also universal typically. And by universal, I mean that the SRS does not depend on the relation. And this might be actually much more difficult to achieve. Um, but there is actually a protocol called Mirage, where they do modify CROT16 to also obtain universality. But this is already quite a big modification, I would say. But if you apply this paper together with the Mirage, then you can get a, a version of CROT16, which is both universal and updatable. So yeah, thank you for listening. <laughs>